Hello guys and welcome to this new video. Today I want to explain to you a really simple trick, well not really a trick but a good habit that I find to be indispensable for each race driver in order to improve at the track every day. When we are kids to improve and get better we need primarily one thing, feedback. We need somebody telling us what we are doing wrong and telling us how eventually we can correct these mistakes. We need feedback as kids in order to understand that we don't have to touch the hot stove. If we don't get burned and feel pain, we will do again the same action the following time. We need feedback when we are learning how to cycle and we try to be in equilibrium. We need feedback when we learn how to ski and the instructor beats us up with the ski pole and tell us how to distribute our weight on the skis. Or when we play football and we make a wrong movement on the pitch and our coach shows us what we should have done. Well, then this must be also valid on a racetrack. I think that you would agree with me that no matter how good a team manager or a driver coach is, it is not easy to understand everything that's happening on a track and what the driver's mistakes are only by watching him from the grandstands. The only way to understand correctly and precisely what we are doing wrong on a racetrack is the use of telemetry. Today in this video I will show you how, thanks to the use of telemetry, I managed to improve in between two sessions and lower my lap time by almost six tenths. But now I will introduce you to a friend of mine. He is a much more experienced racing driver than I am. He competed in many races, achieving a good number of victories. And today he's going to help us. I introduce you to Daniele. Eccoci qua, sono qua con il buon Daniele. Ciao. Ciao a tutti. Dani, tu da quanto corri in kart? Eh, un 5 anni buoni, dai. Quindi un bel po' di esperienza l'hai fatta. Diciamo che qualche treno di gomma l'abbiamo usato. <ride> l'abbiamo usato, l'hai usato bene, ti è servito a vincere qualcosa? Eh, qualche garetta siamo riusciti a dire la nostra. Però bene. non abbiamo ancora vinto quello che vorremmo vincere. Ma c'è sempre tempo, dai, c'è sempre tempo. Quest'anno farai qualche campionato? Dove corri? L'idea è di fare il campionato KZN. E... E vincere. Vi sì, ovviamente. Io oggi ti affiderò il mio kart, okay. distruggi il mio tempo, ma non troppo, perché sennò torno a casa triste e poi... Ci, ci proviamo, spero di starci perché sì, in effetti abbiamo due misure. misure un po' diverse, però farò del mio meglio, dai. Va bene, grazie mille Dani. Grazie a te. Ciao. Ciao a tutti. So why do we need Dani today? Well, Dani will help me improving. We will both drive my go-kart on the same tires. He will go first and I will go second. Later, I will analyze his data, compare it with mine and see where I'm making mistakes and how I can improve. wondering what you might need uh, in order to analyze correctly telemetry, well I can tell you that ideally you will need a brake pedal position sensor, a throttle pedal position sensor and the steering wheel sensor, GPS and speed. But like in my case, since I do not own a brake, a throttle and steering position sensors, I will rely on other data that my Alfano allows me to have. In fact, thanks to the accelerometer I can understand more or less what my feet are doing. But let's go check what happened on track. The red line is mine, 49.7. The green line is Daniele's. We have on the top uh, engine speed, 
we have here the longitudinal acceleration, so accelerating and braking of the go-kart, the GPS speed trace, and at the bottom I placed the time gain or time lost. For the axis, I usually keep uh, the distance, so I bo have both the co-carts aligned in the same spot. The speed is really, really, really similar on the first straight. Let's see here when we find the first boob, where I lose some time is, in fact, braking. Why do I lose time under braking? Just have a look at the longitudinal acceleration. When this goes negative, it means that more or less I started the braking maneuver. In reality, it's a bit earlier because the accelerometer has some delay time. But in order to have a reference point, uh, let's say that it is negative when we start braking. If you look at the bottom right, can you see that white flower? Well, I start my braking maneuver two or three meters earlier than that white flower, but instead have a look where Daniele starts braking. He passes the flower and he brakes much after that. If we go check the GPS distance, we can see that I brake at 78 meters, he brakes at 85. So almost seven meter later. In the braking phase, he gains almost two tenths over me. Two tenths that are going down Afterwards, because since I break later, I managed to go on the throttle a little bit earlier. But since uh, the straight after the corner is really, really short, accelerating early is not really important, but it's more important to break a little bit later, since there are just a few meters from turn one to turn two. Turn two, where again under braking, Daniele gains a lot. From 0 0.95 to almost 3.3 tenths. Almost two tenths lost under braking. I start braking basically where uh, the curb is. Danny starts braking after passing the curb. A lot after <laughs> passing the curb. And if you look at the intensity of braking, I do 1G, 1.02, 1.0.3 Gs. He makes 1.14 g almost 10 percent more than i do cornering spin that are really similar also here look at the top how daniele uh, pulls gear much higher than i do this is good but uh, not always in this case i know that my engine is a bit weak at the top end it still has a bit more torque at the medium revs so i do a little bit of short shifting and see here how the speeds separate. I gain almost four kilometers an hour on him just because I change early. This is because I know my cart, it's mine. He doesn't know it. He thinks that as normal, uh, since he's a racing engine, there must be some really good power on the top, but instead I know that mine is a bit, a um, little bit shit. So let's say by, that by exploiting my diesel engine, I managed to uh, gain some tenths, going back to 2.2 tenths from him. We arrive here at the important bit, the airpins. You complained uh, in the comments a lot about the way that I approach airpins and uh, I see your point and I agree with you, but I never managed to really work on it and improve. In fact, there are two ways of basically uh, approaching an airpin. One is the KF approach. So you basically have to stay really wide in the corner entry, carry as much speed as you can to the apex, so you can uh, keep your engine revs really high and not waste any precious power and exit nice and smooth. Number two is to do the correct racing line for a KZ, which consists of anticipating the corner entry and not running too wide under braking and stay just a little bit tighter towards the corner in a way that we travel less distance. Keeping the corner a little bit sharper and going on the gas as early as you can so that we can exploit all the extra power that we have from our engine, which is more, of course, than a KF. Of course, I admit it, I'm using the KZ like if it was a KF in airpins. Just look at this. Daniele is at top, I am at the bottom. And look at the difference in the racing line. Under braking, I keep constantly going wider and wider. 
just before turning my wheel, look where I am. I am 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters from the outside curbs, while Danny is at least two and a half meters. He already started doing the corner. Well, he hasn't started, but he already reached the ideal velo velocity two meters closer to the corner. And we find ourselves on the apex. I have almost five kilometers an hour more of cornering speed than him. He's at 44 kph, I'm at 48. In this phase, Danny gains almost uh, two tenths. Two tenths that unfortunately are not exploited uh, because uh, here Danny has some uh, oversteering under acceleration. You can also see it here from the acceleration. There is a, there is a gap here and lost uh, precious time. So here I managed to gain again. In the end, I didn't lose that much, but I would have lost at least two tenths if Danny didn't have this uh, oversteering moment. The same applies for the second airplane. You can see here, just look at how Danny is much closer to that red bit which is the Marshall post, and I'm much further away. He gains a lot again under braking, almost a tenth. And in the end, uh, we go back to two and a half tenths. Uh, again, here I gain a little bit because I know my go-kart and I do some short shifting uh, using the extra torque. You can see here, 82 against 79. <laughs> And then the left hander, here we break more or less in the same spot, which is good. More or less the same in the corner approach. Well, I have an hesitation under acceleration. I short shift changing at 12,300 RPM instead of uh, pulling all the gear until 14,500. And here I lose a lot, a lot of speed and lose almost a tenth. Let's go back to another critical phase, another braking zone. Danny still brakes us a lot harder, 1.03 against 0.95, and he gains another 10. Now the time difference is 0.4 seconds between us. But let's now focus on the real disaster that I did, which was the last sector, the most driven part of Castelletto. Well, even uh, we both break at the same point, uh, Danny breaks much harder. And also here again, sometimes, but here in the more driven uh, part of the track, he managed to carry an apex speed much higher than mine almost six kilometers per hour on the left hander and almost 10 kilometers an hour on the right hander and here the gap that was uh, only four or five tenths uh, goes uh, to seven and a half tenths well guys you saw how thanks to this useful information provided us by data analysis i managed to lower my lap time by almost six tenths in between two sessions this was already in late afternoon, so I've been doing many laps throughout the day, but I was never able to improve that much in such a short period of time. This was the first time that Daniele drove my cart, so he wasn't really used to it. And also, he barely fit because he's quite tall. I still think there is a lot for me to improve in Castelletto. After the first session, and after checking the data in the van, I decided to go back on track to try and put into practice everything that I have learned from data analysis. Let's see how the second attempt went.
Firstly, I want to say a big thanks to Daniele for uh, helping me in this experiment. Guys, as usual, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that this video was useful for you. If you have any question about telemetry and data analysis, just ask me. Of course, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. It's really, really important. And click on the bell icon. Thank you again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.